powered by Pipe TV. Special guest today and we are definitely at a private location and we're about to get up close and personal but first let's look at the background story I did 21 years for a crime that I committed at 17 years old in which no one was physically hurt harm or injured and I was a first-time felony offender and I've, I've gained so much knowledge I've gained so much you know experience and I've accepted responsibility for what I did wrong. What other reasons did it keep me in prison? When Dante Mitchell was 17 years old, he was sentenced as an adult to 35 to 70 years in prison. His sentence is comparable to that of a murderer, even though no one was injured in his crime. Black youth are nine times more likely to be sentenced as adults than white youth. Dante has now spent more than half of his life in prison and he's not eligible for parole for six more years. You know, when the judge told me he had 30 years, I, 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 I kind of like been in denial a long time. Dante, who grew up in Albany, New York, describes his childhood as traumatic. He witnessed abuse, his father wasn't around, and his mother was addicted to drugs. It was very, very hard for Dante. You know, but he was a good kid. He would man up, you know. He would feed his sisters. He would clean the house. He just did a lot more than a young child sh should have to do. At 11 years old, Dante was removed from his mother's home. For the next five years, he lived in various foster care homes before aging out of the system at 16. He ended up at a temporary shelter for homeless youth called Equinox. Equinox was in Albany, New York. It was just, the staff there were pretty, just, you know, pretty cool. They were, you know, very responsive to the needs of the children there. I just never had that, like, you know, having that level of adult support and caring. Now, let's welcome to the show, Dante and Mitchell. Hey, Dante. Thank you for coming through. I'm glad to be here. Look, I know you've been hearing this for a minute. Welcome home. Yeah, it has. Yeah, yeah. Look, I have, okay, so people saw the background story, but I want to get a little bit more in depth, okay? So I'm going to read something to you. Ready? Mm -hmm. Was convicted of first degree robbery, criminal use of a firearm, and attempt to knowingly um, uh, make and possess dangerous contraband in prison. Two counts of first degree attempt robbery, two counts of second degree criminal possession of a weapon, and fourth degree grand larceny in 1997 and 2003, including crimes he committed at age 17 and while homeless. He served 24 and a half years out of 27 to 54 years sentence. How you feel about that? Uh. Is that you? Or should I say, let me, let, me, let me rephrase, who is that? That was a kid that was misguided a very long time ago. Definitely not who I am today. Yeah, yeah. I, I happen to agree. My question is, when you hear this statement, does it give you chills? Like, what does it make you feel like? What was I thinking? Mm. Like what was what was going through my mind that mm. I, you know at such a young age I was engaged in that type of activity, but 
you know, it's not it's not easily explainable. You know, it's just it's it's something that we've as a people been dealing with for a very long time. Yeah. Look, I already know that I know when I do something wrong, I hate somebody constantly telling me what I did wrong. That's true. Because it's not you now. It's n correct. Correct. And you know what? We're going to get to know who the new Dante Mitchell. I hate to put it that way, but who the other Dante Mitchell is. Because I even know, you know, looking back at some of the um, past films that I've researched, a lot of people said, he's a good kid, but he was a good kid. Yeah, I was. I mean, it, it, you, wouldn't have, you wouldn't expect that from me. You know, yeah. if, if there was a vote on who was most likely to succeed, I would have won. Right. You know, even my brother, my moms, and many others was like, you know, you, you did that? Right. So it's like, you know, because you had the potential to do other things, but there are other factors involved that hinder you, even if you're, you know, if you have Making to. Making that conscious decision to, you know, do right or wrong. Yeah. Yeah. There's other factors that affect that. Yeah. Well, look, guys, we're definitely going to come back with more Dante, and um, we're going to talk about what he's doing right now, how he made the transition, because it is an awesome transition that everyone has to find out about. I hope you Right? And, and if you haven't been following him, you better start following him, because um, from the time he was released, actually before he was released, he was making moves on the outside, and it's continuing. So guys, stay tuned and we'll be right back. As part of Cuomo's clemency actions, five people saw their prison sentences commuted. One of those inmates, an Albany man, Dante Mitchell, who is serving time downstate in Fishkill Correctional Facility. CBS 6's Emma Quinn spoke with Mitchell about the clemency process and how he hopes his story will inspire others. From 11 to 16, I was in, you know, I went from different group homes to foster um, families, signed out of foster care at 16, but then 10 months I was in prison. For the last 24 years, Albany native Dante Mitchell has worn the inmate number 98A0071. He's been incarcerated since the age of 17 for an attempted robbery and criminal possession of a weapon. Kind of introduced to a different lifestyle. Um, no guns and, you know, robbing people. There was no adults around to really, you know, give me any guidance that this is not the thing to do. With a desire to better himself and others around him, Mitchell worked towards getting an associate's degree and is enrolled in plumbing and heating vocational programs. In 2008, he founded Ujima Fraternal Dynasty, a self-improvement fraternity. Where I would utilize, you know, my experiences in prison, you know, the knowledge that I've learned, to try to help younger prisoners navigate their way through this situation without having to make the same mistakes that I have made. Through this mentorship and gaining outside support, Mitchell will become a free man in September after his sentence was commuted by former Governor Andrew Cuomo. One of the greatest and most profoundest feelings that I had is that all the young men that I've been mentoring and telling them that this moment was coming and that I'm going home, I just felt like now this is going to lift their spirits and, you know, push them to really start the process of change and betterment. After his release, Mitchell will complete a fellowship with the Reform Alliance and work to expand UFD. The main goal, to show other inmates they are more than just a number. Emma Quinn, CBS 6 News. Mitchell supporters have set up a GoFundMe page to help cover costs when he's released. We did contact former Governor Cuomo's office to ask why specifically Mitchell's sentence was commuted, but we never got a response. Hey, y'all. I'm Jacana, owner of JoJo's Closet, Curve Teak, where we encourage curvy physiques to rock their curves straight up, no chaser. And I'm on the move with Miss Tony. Welcome back. I'm your host, Ms. Tony, and I have my guest here, Dante Mitchell. Um, we've just been talking about, you know, him making a transition. You've heard his story. So, Dante, the day that you found out 
that you were being released. It's after how many years, first of all? 24 years, seven months, and nine days. Oof. You gonna count the hours too? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. So when you heard the news, like who brought you the news? It was um, Deputy Superintendent of Programs Woods at Fishkill Correctional Facility mm -hmm. who had brought me the news. And the way they did it was kind of like cloak and dagger because at that time I was on the phone um, in, the, in the dorm area, mm -hmm. what I thought was an important phone call. So when the officer told me I had to go to the specialty clinic, which I'd never even heard of before, mm -hmm. I was like, I was a little upset. Like, wow, like, what I gotta go there for, man? Like, <laughs> this ain't the time you go to the clinic. So I'm just, you know, doing this beefing about it. Like, right. this don't make no sense. All right, man, take the pass. I'm going up there. <laughs> so I go up there, and it's like all this cloak and dagger stuff. Like, I see an officer there. He's like, mm -hmm. um, yeah, you flock, you go over here, you go in this booth. So I go into the booth area, and I'm just waiting. Mm. Waiting. You know, prison, that's one of the. Probably you know, only five minutes passed by, but it probably no, felt actually, like it's it turning. No, it was, no, it was, it, it's because it's like everything in prison is like, hurry up and wait, hurry up and wait. Mm. So I'm sitting there, I'm sitting there, but like, after like 15, 20 minutes pass, I see a guy walk out and I see that Woods. And he's like, yeah, you coming with me? So I go into this room, you know, there's a screen that they have up for, you know, like the medical screens, mm -hmm. has that up and there's a Lord. chair there and there's another chair. I'm like, what is this, an interrogation? Oh, Immediately you start thinking, yes, you know, the negative. Right, yeah, some, something's up, like they got mm. some information, like what's going on? <laughs> so I sit there and he's like, he immediately, like, I don't know, he must've just played into the whole scene because I was just, the way he, initially came over. What did you do? Uh uh. I ain't do nothing. I don't know what you're talking about. What are you talking about? I didn't do anything. He was like, what, what, what would you I said, I, I don't know what you're talking about. What, like what what? Like mm. express yourself, explain. Like you kinda confused me. Uh -huh. He's like, well you must have did something because Governor Cuomo granted you clemency. And uh -huh. I got stuck. I was like, I said you lying. <laughs> he said no. Nope. And he just started spurking. Oh, wow. I got up and started crying. I was just Aww. like started crying, literally like tears was just coming yeah. out of my eyes. Like, like you wow. still think they was punking you, right? Yeah, like yeah. it was just, it's like, wow, this is crazy. It happened. It happened. It happened. While you were, cause I know at one time you were trying to do an appeal and that was shot down. Yeah. So when you actually heard this, did like how how often were you actually trying to get an appeal or get clemency? Like, what was your routine in order for like, why you? So let me let me. I know. So I threw out so many questions at no, you. I'm, I'm sorry, thinking, but I'm gonna answer it because it's it's compelling. Mm. In 2014, I was in solitary confinement when a guy named Brooklyn gave me a book called The Success Principles: How to Get from Where You Are to Where You Want to Be. Mm. which is actually a book one of the young men that I work with um, wants to read. It was because of three specific success principles that I read in that book that kind of sent me on the journey to seek out clemency. Mm. One of them was reject rejection, um, mm. ask, 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 and the other one was practice persistence. Wow. So when I read that, I'm like, you know what? And I read some of the stories that the author used to kind of draw out the lesson. Right. Like this is right. how these, this is real life application of the lesson. It's just not me, you know, theorizing. Right. These people did these lessons. Yes. And, you know, a few of the stories were people like, you know, who were willing to knock on a 12,000 doors before they got a yes. People were willing to make 89 calls before they got their first mm -hmm, yes. Mm -hmm. That they were willing to go through all the frustration of people telling them, no, 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 no. We're not doing it for you, we're not doing it for you, until they got that one person who said, then yes, let's go, right. So that set me off. I said, you know what? Man, I'm gonna I'm I'm practice this. Mm. So I wrote Governor Cuomo a letter every week for like three years. Wow. And um, that led to me wow. eventually writing letters to various organizations and just kept sending them out, sending them out. Until one day in 2017, when I was in Elmira, just 2014 to 2017 right. now, that a guy named Paul Ream, an older white gentleman, mm. kind of heard my story, heard what I was saying. He was like the first like major yes. Mm. Um, he, that led to now this media doing a video about my life in incarceration. Wow. It led to so much, 
you know, yes. and the momentum just grew from there. But even then, it still took until 2017, until 2021 before it all all really came to head. Fruition, yeah. Yeah. Wow, that is awesome. I mean, and, and I know definitely while you were incarcerated, you started, I and mean, besides you reading that book, you also got the, the idea, I need to put something together for, you know, to mentor some of these young guys, you know, that, that may be in the similar situation I am. And that organization is called? UFD, UFD. the Ujima Fraternal Dynasty, yes. a.k.a. Obima, the official black elite ambitious money-making association. Wow. <laughs> it's a mouthful, right? It is. <laughs> but there's literally just a, 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 a simple concept, which is what? What's the concept behind that? It's just mutual self-improvement. I help you, you help me. If we work together, we can achieve more than we could if we were just to do it independently or separately. Right, you know, so right. So that's basically it. Wow. So guys, you know what? When we come back, we're going to talk more about UFD, Ujima Fraternal Dynasty. Yes. See, I know I'm going to get it. I'm going to get it, guys. Don't worry about that. All right, we're going to talk more about that, and we're actually going to get a chance to meet some of the guys that he's mentoring now that he's out. You know, he was doing all this while, you know, while in, incarcerated, yep. right, taking care of those, those guys in there. But now when he's out, he still is doing it and pushing. So when we come back, we're going to talk more with Dante. Be back. So welcome back. Yes, we are still here with Dante Mitchell, telling us all his story, telling us how he's transitioned out. And besides you transitioning out into society here, you also developed another name. Yeah. Mfame Sikivu. Mfame Sikivu. I said it right. Yeah, you did. Yes. What does that mean? In Swahili, means dutiful king. Dutiful king. Yeah. Fantastic. Thank you. Yes. Did someone give you that name, or did you? No, I picked it. You picked it. All right. It's well-deserved. Because you. you are doing king-like stuff out here with these guys. And um, I know, you know, a lot of people were rooting for you and trying to help you get out. Um, what are, who are some people that actually um, was, was rooting for you or, you know, were saying, saying things to help you get out? Um, Maurice Ballard, mm. um, you know, my, my guy, Mr. Footwork. Um, <laughs> My son, the general, um, mm -hmm. Angelo Pinto, mm -hmm. um, Jessica Jackson, um, my legal team, Nathan, nice. and um, you know the whole uh, New York um, law school clinic that mm -hmm. helped me out, um, right. Main Street Legal Services. Mm -hmm. um, my clemency application was done by Barclay Damon. Um, Boy, you got a list. You yeah. still, <laughs> and he's and, still um, looking up, thinking of some more of those yeah, names. So shout out to all of them. Oh, all of them, all of them, and I know um, Meek Mills had said a couple of things, yeah, and he, you know, um, it was it was due to Meek Mills that um, uh, my my son reposted the video that now this media did. Meek Mills put it on his story. Nice. Yeah, he got in contact with, you know, uh, Jessica Jackson. Totally right. looking into my situation. Right. Right. Well, look, shout out to all those people. Um, but guess what? We're going to return right back because I have a little present for you. Let's return. Yo, what's up? It's your boy Rashad Bashir. I'm the stand up comedian from Harlem, and I am on the move with Miss Tony. So I told you when you guys came back, we're going to have a special surprise for you. So coming on shortly is going to be some of his people that he's mentoring, okay? Um, I know there's a special name for them. Yeah, you know, members of UFD, my organization, we refer to ourselves as Ndugu, which is a Swahili word that means brother, sister, comrade, relative. And we use that term because we're like family, mm. you know, so these individuals that are coming on, these are my younger Ndugu. Um, they're 15 and 16 years old, okay. so they'll introduce themselves. 
But you might ask me another question about yeah, the female. Yeah, so there was, I hear you saying male and female. So are there females involved in your organization? Yeah, um, UFD is open to men and women, and we mm. do have um, female members. And we're trying to get more younger females involved. That's been somewhat of a challenge because I'm an older male and, you know, approaching younger women, you mm -hmm. know, they could be problematic. So I, I'm trying to recruit more older women to get involved in UFD right. so that they can go after some of the younger women. But there are two young women that I am in contact with that are 15 years old. Okay. Um, one of them was in uh, the video of the young gentleman that we're going to be bringing up. Oh, okay. So. Yes, yes, yes. Well, look, uh I don't want to wait much longer to introduce these two um, gentlemen. So let's go ahead and bring them out. Come on out here, gentlemen. Yes, here they go, here they go. Up and rising stars right here. You saw it on the move with Miss Tony first. Yes, yes. So please, gentlemen, introduce yourselves. I'm Keen, I'm Dante's day one guy, man. <laughs> Rapper slash upcoming model and also brand ambassador for Until Freedom. Okay. How old are you? 16. <laughs> I'm Kwavi, Kwav13 from Albany, New York. I'm a rapper slash singer, and I'm also 15, yeah. 15, yeah. okay. Well, look, this is not the first time you're gonna see them, because we're definitely gonna bring them back, and we're gonna work on their interviewing skills and stuff <laughs> like that, right? And um, of course, you said that you're an um, up-and-coming model, yeah. so did you know that you just missed New York Fashion Week? It's crazy. Yes, it's crazy. just like right. by a hair, like this weekend that just passed. We got another one coming up. We do, we do. Um, sometime in September, so we're gonna make sure that we get yeah, you I'm ready for that one. Most definitely. Yes, I'm gonna keep you. I'm gonna keep you posted because, as people know, my followers. You know, I'm a I'm a plus size, curvy female model. So I make sure that I try to get all my um, young ones also into some of those classes. We're gonna get you walking on the runway in a minute. Yeah, right. so one last thing I wanted to say too, mm -hmm. um, you know, as part of, you know, our organization, we help people who join our organization to um, achieve their goal, to market their abilities, their mm -hmm. skills, their talents, and their ideas. And um, it's incumbent upon older members to teach and mentor the younger members. So, you know, I've taken them under my wing, you know, and I'm mentoring them. I'm also managing their careers and trying right. to help promote them. So that's the reason why they're here. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful. and. For that to happen, people need to follow you, Dante. Yeah, so, so how can they follow you? Um, they can follow me on IG at Dante Mitchell Free. I'm also on Facebook um, at Foul Macy Kivu. Um, they also can follow me on YouTube. My YouTube channel is Conscious Money Talks. And um, they can also, like for individuals who are interested in becoming members of UFD, they yes. can go to www.ufdeez.org. Um, there's a membership application on there and it breaks down you know our aims our purpose our beliefs and principles so yes. everything they want to know about the organization is pretty much there and is a way for them to contact us there with any questions or comments mm -hmm. we will get back to them okay good good and what about sponsorships are you looking for sponsorships for the absolutely UFD? yeah you know we would definitely love people to sponsor uh, UFD invest in UFD make donations in UFD mm -hmm. um, there is a way to actually donate to UFD via cash app um, on the website, um, UFDs, okay. EEZ, if people are willing to do that. Because, you know, I come out of pocket, um, you know, helping them, promoting them. Absolutely, um, absolutely. Know, but they're the future, so, you know, I really want to definitely get more depth I, about I, I'm so glad that you say that, because I say that all the time, that the kids are the future. So if we don't, you know, encourage them and push them now, where are they going to get to, right? right? So Dante is doing some fabulous stuff. So until then, I want you guys to be well and stay safe. And I'm going to get Quav... Quavi. I'm going to get his name right next time. <laughs> but we're going to see what skills he has, okay? So he's going to take us out on the show. And um, this is your girl, Miss Tony, And you are watching On The Move with Miss Tony. You ready? Uh, when you ask for forgiveness on all platforms, you know, Apple Music, Spotify, you, the music videos on YouTube right now um, at Quav13 Q U A V one three, and yeah, on all platforms you can check it out. Uh, yeah. Where you where you where you at, Quavi? Yeah. <sighs> Cause you know how it goes around. Friends, you done moved on But
But you ain't been telling me the same I've been trying to, I've been trying to find a way To be cool either way it goes Yeah, cause the options look real better When the pathway closes Yeah, so when you ask for forgiveness I gotta say no Oh, now you wanna act froze Cause everyone knows You ain't really like that man Before you hit him, you would text me in advance No, I ain't dumb, so I never had plans for us And that's cause I never had faith in your trust I gotta like you, like you like me It's a must now Because I swear through that pass and it ain't touched down Yeah, 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 no, no Like that, like that, whoa Yeah can't believe I'm this cold and I'm still not known Come on, huh? yeah She brought a friend, that's a coupon, two for one Both of them, no 13 from the song They don't know Quavi though, and that's wrong I just wanna be with you like all day long But I know that's wrong too And I never endure oh, the fake rumors, baby But I know I want you and you know you want me So let's not act so clueless, baby what? Favorite color red, but I'm tryna ride round in the blue No, I feel you when I FaceTime out the blue Girl in my dreams, baby, it came true Guess who it was? It was, wait, wait I don't know yet, maybe I do Y'all should break up, so do you been messing with the wrong you? Done told your friends, you done moved on But you ain't been telling me the same I've been tryna, I've been tryna find a way To be cool, either way it goes yeah, cause the options look real better when the pathway closes. Yeah, so when you ask for forgiveness, I have you ever felt this type of feeling when you wake up? Shorty look going no me. Have you ever have you ever felt this type of feeling when you wake up? Shorty look going no me. Have you ever have you ever felt this type of feeling when you wake up? Shorty shorty going no and makeup. Have you ever felt this type of feeling when you wake up? Shorty look going no but you ain't been telling me the same I've been trying to, I've been trying to find a way